I'm pleased that you are here taking time out from your busy lives to be with us. You are, of course, a very much a part of Columbia Seminary. And so it is right and good to gather together and learn and encourage and worship and hope. I would love to tell you in just the opening few minutes of our time together, a little bit about what has been going on at Columbia in the past 12 months. It has been a full year since we made some dramatic pivots in our life together. I am proud of how Columbia Seminary made multiple dramatic changes rapidly and with grace. I am also proud that we put the safety of our students and faculty and staff front and center as we made these important decisions. That is why we decided to operate our courses fully online and create ways for faculty and staff to work remotely away from our campus, which has been closed now for all these months. And I'm happy to report that Columbia continues to do what Columbia does best, provide top-notch theological education, continuing education, and even community in new formats and new ways. The learning curve of the faculty was steep, but they stepped it up in a way that demonstrates the commitment and the care of our faculty. The students remained engaged with each other and with their professors. Many students were rightfully disappointed that we were online, but others realized that they could not have come to our campus in any case. That especially included our international students and we are glad that we can make their studies possible. Of course, we had growing pains and learned many lessons. We wanted to hear from students. So we did a campus-wide survey last fall to hear their suggestions and their experiences. On the basis of that survey, Dean Love Seacrest asked the faculty to make a few changes. We are continuing to listen to students so that we can continue to get better. Last year, we thought we would have a small incoming class for the fall of 2020. We thought the pandemic would hinder students from applying for admission to Columbia Seminary. Instead, much to our amazement, we had a record-breaking entering class of just over 100 students in all degree programs. This class represents 14 nationalities, about half are PCUSA, and the other half come from ecclesial traditions, including the AME Church, Korean Presbyterians, non- and interdenominational churches, ELCA, Anglican, and many others. I'm happy to report that the incoming students for this fall 2021 also looks larger than we would expect. We are excited that the word is spreading that Columbia Seminary is the place to be. I believe that our strong admissions numbers are due to at least three factors. First, the work of the Holy Spirit. Second, our incredible admissions team. Third, people are sometimes re-examining their lives and their vocation and their call in times of crisis. These combination of factors, I think, have produced our wonderful numbers. I am asked many times every week, when will Columbia open its campus and its classrooms and its residence halls? The short answer is, we don't know yet. We are tracking data and trends and recommendations and trying to make prudent and thoughtful decisions. We will communicate widely as soon as we make this important decision. You will hear from us. 
Now, I would love to highlight some of the bright spots in our life together in this past year. The library staff has been creative and resourceful in ensuring that our students have the resources they need for their study and their research. Our Center for Lifelong Learning remains committed to pastoral leaders, and so they have adapted their program delivery. The Center for Lifelong Learning has also received a grant from the Lilly Endowment, a million dollar grant called the Rekindle Program. It is designed to help churches plan and prepare for ministry in a post-pandemic world. Pastoral leaders and their congregations will be able to apply for grants to fund rekindle projects. These applications are still open. Might your church want to apply? You can find out more information on our website. Another bright spot is the bold action of the Board of Trustees last summer in their affirmation of a commitment statement called Repairing the Breach, Deepening Columbia's Commitment to Black People and Their Flourishing. We are engaged in a deep analysis of the seminary's complicity in the enslavement and oppression of Black people. This is a campus-wide commitment and will include our graduates as well. Again, we will communicate to you as these commitments unfold. One of those commitments is that is now complete is the renaming of the NRH. It is now the Riggs Commons. Dr. Riggs is the first black professor at Columbia and has served for nearly 30 years. Her commitment to students is well known and she has persisted in advocating for justice in many arenas. Our work on repairing the breach continues with a task force of faculty, staff, students, trustees, and alumni who will develop concrete recommendations for our preferred narrative. This group was formed under the leadership of Dr. Riggs and from the project that is now called the Becoming Project. This morning at 1145, you heard from the Becoming Project task force. You heard about our hopes and dreams for racial justice to become deeply entrenched and embedded in our life together. I would like to make another special announcement about the Center for Lifelong Learning. Just yesterday, the Ministering to Ministers Foundation officially became a part of Columbia Theological Seminary, more specifically, a part of the Center for Lifelong Learning. Ministering to Ministers has been a multi-denominational nonprofit for 25 years. They work with ministers and their families who have experienced difficult, even traumatic separations from congregations. And so we are pleased to take on this important work and continue it. So much more is happening, friends. I hope you always feel free to ask questions about the seminary that we all love. I will do my best to help. <laughs>